Hello, I'm Ron Wilson. In this month's news, life industry associations have collaborated to propose a reform package which includes recommendations for a reduction in maximum total upfront commission to 60% of first year policy premiums from 1 July 2018 and in maximum ongoing commissions to 20% of subsequent year's premiums effective 1 January 2016. In international news, US economic performance has been revised upwards from an estimated 0.7% contraction to only a 0.2% contraction for Q1 2015, while Greece has agreed to the terms of its third bailout in five years despite a strong no vote from its citizens. In other news, some minor and technical refinements have been applied to the FOFA laws. Trevor Trahan has the details. A significant reform package on behalf of the retail life insurance industry has been proposed by the AFA, FPA and FSC. Under the proposals, which are in response to an independent report, Review of Retail Life Insurance Advice, by former APRA member John Trowbridge, the maximum total upfront commission would fall over a transitional period commencing 1 January 2016 to 60% of the first year's policy premium by 1 July 2018. The maximum level of ongoing commissions would also be reduced to 20% of the policy premium in all subsequent years, with this coming into effect from 1 January 2016. The RBA has decided to maintain the official cash rate of 2% at its July board meeting. RBA Governor Glenn Stevens commented that overall, Australia's economy is likely to be operating with a degree of spare capacity for some time yet. After years of income growth for Australians, there are now weaker medium-term growth prospects, according to the IMF. The IMF stated that Australians have enjoyed exceptionally strong income growth for the last couple of decades, but the declining resource investment boom and terms of trade have brought this to a halt. The IMF described Australia's outperformance of other markets as fading after its economy grew almost twice as fast as its peers in the last two decades. China is expected to overtake the US in 2026 in nominal GDP and US dollar terms and maintain its position as the largest economy to 2050, according to a report by the Economist Intelligence Unit. The special report, Long-Term Macroeconomic Forecasts, key trends to 2050, also found that India is expected to move up the rankings to third place, with real growth averaging close to 5% up to 2050. Indonesia and Mexico are expected to leap into the top 10 world economies from 16th and 15th place in 2014 to 4th and 8th place respectively by 2050. The US economy contracted at an annual rate of 0.2% in the first quarter of the year, an upgrade from the previous estimate of a 0.7% contraction, according to the Bureau of Economic Analysis. The new GDP estimate is based on more complete source data and showed that exports decreased less than previously estimated, and personal consumption expenditures and imports further increased. Despite a national referendum on receiving further financial assistance from creditors returning a no vote, Greece has agreed to its third rescue package in five years. 61% of voters had rejected the terms from Greece's creditors in the referendum, but within a week of polls closing, new terms for creditors had been agreed anyway. The three-year bailout is worth up to 86 billion euros and involves a series of measures, including changes to Greece's VAT system, improving the long-term sustainability of the pension system, significant asset privatisation, and 10 to 25 billion euros set aside for bank recapitalization or liquidation. Some minor and technical refinements have been applied to the FOFA laws contained in the Corporations Act. The FOFA laws were introduced in 2012 to provide important consumer protections by imposing a statutory best interest duty on financial advisors banning conflicted remuneration and strengthening disclosure. The agreed refinements will be progressed to Clarify that advice provided to an employer about default superannuation funds is considered to be providing a financial service to a retail client. Make FOFA consistent with other parts of the Corporations Act by including a wholesale and retail client distinction. Update FOFA to treat non-cash payments such as travel money cards consistently with other simple financial products. Ensure that the modified best interest duty applies in respect of advice on basic banking products and or general insurance 
even when provided at the same time as advice on the provision of consumer credit insurance or CCI. Make the conflicted remuneration exemption that applies to basic banking products and general insurance applicable to benefits relating to CCI, where an employee or agent of an authorised deposit-taking institution provides advice on any or a combination of these three products. And ensure that benefits provided by a retail client to their financial advisor are exempt from conflicted remuneration provisions. In a bid to help investors in taking collective action to improve the corporate governance of listed entities, ASIC has released Regulatory Guide 128, Collective Action by Investors. The guidance includes illustrative examples of conduct which is unlikely or more likely to trigger the takeover and substantial holding provisions. An outline of ASIC's approach to enforcement of these provisions in the context of collective action by investors, which includes considering whether the conduct is control-seeking rather than simply promoting good corporate governance, and an overview of some other legal and regulatory issues that can arise in relation to investor engagement. The net profit after tax of ADIs over the year ending 31 March 2015 was $35.2 billion an increase of $3 billion, or 9.4% on the year ending 31 March 2014, according to APRA. Total capital base of ADIs was $228.1 billion at 31 March 2015, and risk-weighted assets were $1.8 trillion at that date. The capital adequacy ratio for all ADIs was 12.7%.